In the previous movie, we animated our various MASH networks using keyframes. In this movie, we'll create an animated HUD element that follows the camera. You can either continue working from your previous file, or load the provided MASH UI Part 4 Start, provided in the link in the description. We're going to create four different types of HUD objects, starting with the simple spinning grid in the top left. To start, create a new cube and rename it HUD Cube, and use the Attribute Editor to reduce the scale to 0.5 in all axes. This is the base object we'll use for all our HUD MASH effects. Create a new MASH network from this cube and name the network MASH HUD Grid. We'll use this nomenclature for all our HUD objects to make the outliner clearer. Don't forget to rename the repro mesh to match. The easiest way to create a grid is to use the appropriate distribution. So go to the Network's Distribute tab and set the distribution type to Grid. Scroll down to the Grid Settings section and set the number of points in X, Y, and Z to 3, 5, and 5 respectively. This will create three rows of a 5x5 five five grid. Let's also reduce the distances in X, Y, and Z to 3, so the gaps aren't so wide. With our grid finished, the next thing we'll want to do is animate it. Since we want the grid to rotate, let's add a transform node to the network. Just like the previous movie, you can change the rotation values here to rotate the grid. However, it's kind of a pain to rotate it by putting manual values in like this. Instead, let's use a controller object to help us. This is somewhat similar to the Earth sphere we've been using for our globe. While we could connect an existing object, we don't really have anything appropriate to use yet. So right-click the controller null field and create a new one. Maya creates this small plus-shaped object called a locator that is connected to our transform node. Notice that now you can use the Rotate tool to manipulate the values much more interactively. Unfortunately, something's wrong. Notice that the grid is rotating unevenly on its base. We'd prefer that it rotate from its center. This is happening because our grid distribution only builds the grid upward. To fix this, we'll need to offset the grid first, then rotate it. Set all your rotations back to zero. Then translate the locator down to negative 1.5. Use the attribute editor to be precise. Then hide the control locator by pressing Ctrl H, since we don't want to accidentally tweak it again. Now that the grid is centered on the origin, go back to the waiter node and create a second transform node. This one will act on top of the one we used to offset. Just like before, create a locator to control it. Now if you try rotating, the grid rotates around the center just like we wanted. Next, let's animate the spin using what we learned in the previous tutorial. Go to frame 1 in the time slider, then set whatever starting rotation you'd like for your grid while pointing the camera down the z-axis. In the Attribute Editor's Transform tab, right-click the Rotate attribute and set a key. Now go to frame 120. Let's say we want this grid to rotate three times on the z-axis. A full rotation is 360 degrees, so set the value to 1080, and right-click Rotate to set another key. Once that's done, press play to watch the animation. The initial animation is okay, but it's spinning a little fast. Go back to frame 120. Instead of three times, let's make the grid only spin once. Let's also change the direction of the spin by inverting the number, so set it to negative 360. Notice the z-axis field changes color to indicate that the value shown is not keyed anymore. Right-click the rotate attribute and key the frame again. That's much better. To give it even more variation, you can also try adding a secondary spin to the x-axis. This time we'll only give it a half turn in those same 5 seconds. And like the various spin animations in the previous tutorial, we don't want this ease in, ease out behavior, so use the graph editor to make all its tangents linear.
Now that the spinning grid is finished, we just need to position and fix it to the camera. Rather than use the default camera, let's create a new one strictly for this purpose by going to Create, Cameras, Camera. Rename it HUD Camera. Now if you go to Panels, Perspective, you'll see that in addition to your default perspective camera, there's also the new HUD camera here. You can use this menu to switch the camera you're looking through at any time. Look through the HUD camera, then pull it back until it frames the globe. Try to keep it looking down the z-axis since that's what we oriented our rotating cube to. Once you've framed the globe, there's a couple more things to do before positioning our element. Go to View, Camera Settings, and turn on Resolution Gate. This will show us the borders of our camera resolution, which will make it a lot easier to position the grid correctly. Then go to the HUD Camera tab and click Presets. Save the current transforms as a new preset called HUD Camera Default. Now we can return the camera to this position whenever we need to. With that done, we're now ready to place our UI element. Add another transform node to your MASH HUD grid network. As before, create a controller for it. This is the transform we will use for placement. The easiest way to do this is via the For View, which you can open by clicking the For View icon on the left side under the toolbar. This simultaneously opens up a top, front, side, and perspective view of your scene. Just like you did before, change the perspective view to your HUD camera. Unfortunately, the outliner has disappeared due to our use of the For View, so open it in a separate window by going to Windows, Outliner. Select the grid's controller, then use the Move tool to translate it towards the camera in the top view. You'll notice the grid get bigger in your HUD camera view. When it's the desired size, indicating a good distance from the camera, use the HUD camera view to position it in the top left. You can then expand the HUD camera view again by placing your mouse cursor in that view and pressing spacebar. We're almost done, but notice if you try to zoom in and out of the scene, the grid doesn't follow. That's because we haven't yet attached it to the camera. This is easy to do though. In the outliner, select the HUD camera and then shift select the grid control locator. Use the drop down here to change the animation menu set. This changes the available menus at the top to those more suited for animation. Now go to Constrain, Parent. This tells Maya to constrain the grid to the camera so that they always transform together. Make sure the Maintain Offset option is turned on. Now if you try zooming or moving the camera, you can see that the grid follows along. As a final bit of cleanup, Select all three transform control locators in the outliner and press Ctrl G to group them together. Rename the group MASH HUD GRID Control Group, and then use Ctrl H to hide this group so the locators don't appear in the workspace. This way they won't clutter up the workspace or move accidentally. In the next movie, we'll use the skills you've developed in this one to create the other three HUD elements.